Hi everyone, my name's Lisa and I am a nutritionist at FODSHOP here to speak to you today about the benefits of fiber on a low FODMAP diet. So what is fiber? Dietary fiber is found in the edible parts of plants that are resistant to digestion and absorption in the small intestine. It's only in the large intestine that they completely or partially ferment. So fiber in general will reduce risk of stroke, coronary heart disease, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, and certain gastrointestinal disorders. Adequate intake may also improve blood lipid profiles, decrease blood pressure, improve glycemic control, improve laxation and immune function, and promote weight loss. The increase of the healthy gut bacteria works as a prebiotic benefit, and it also adds bulking to create a healthy transition of food through your gut. For adults, the Australian Dietary Guidelines recommend consuming 25 grams per day for women and 30 grams per day for men as adults. However, this recommendation is currently not being met by the Australian population, making it difficult to receive these health outcomes. So on this slide, we have the different types of fiber. Insoluble fiber is indigestible, and it's a carbohydrate that cannot be dissolved in water, and it will add bulk to your stools and make them easier to pass whereas soluble fiber will dissolve in water to form a gel-like substance, and this will work to lower your blood glucose and blood cholesterol levels. On the other hand, we have prebiotic fibers, which is a type of fiber, and this feeds the good bacteria to multiply and grow in the large intestine and pass through the gastrointestinal tract undigested. This can help with digestive issues, boost the immune system, prevent certain diseases, and improve your metabolic health. Examples of these are fructans and galacto-oligosaccharides, which include chicory root, Jerusalem artichoke, asparagus, bananas, leeks, onion, and garlic. But these are all high in FODMAPs. So unfortunately for people with IBS, we need to be more careful when choosing prebiotic fibers, as all of these wonderful, healthy prebiotic fibers are actually high FODMAP, which can make them really problematic. So here are some examples of different food sources of soluble and insoluble fibers. So soluble fibers, we've got peas, apples, citrus fruits like grapefruit, oats, barley, and carrots. Whereas insoluble fibers include whole wheat flour, berries, green beans, nuts like cashews, and pistachios. Then you've also got like some beans, like kidney beans and lentils, and some potatoes. So you may notice that some of these foods are also high in FODMAPs, like the ones I mentioned previously. So FODMAPs are short-chain carbohydrates that are poorly absorbed in the gut. The acronym stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. Fermentable stands for the process in which the gut bacteria ferment undigested carbohydrates to produce gas. Oligosaccharides are the fructans and GOS found in onion, garlic, wheat, and legumes. So disaccharides are the lactose found in dairy products like cow's milk, dairy yogurts, and soft cheeses. And then monosaccharides are the fructose found in honey and some fruits and vegetables. Finally, you've got the polyols, and these are sorbitol and mannitol, including some fruits, vegetables, and artificial sweeteners. People following a low FODMAP diet to reduce IBS symptoms usually have difficulties with consuming dietary fiber because many of the foods above are rich in fiber, but intake is limited when following a low FODMAP diet. As FODMAPs are a type of fiber, reducing these will minimize IBS symptoms of cramping, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and flatulence. So there are various randomized control trials that have proven 50 to 80% of people with IBS symptoms actually experience relief from following a low FODMAP diet. However, we now understand the importance of fiber in the diet. So it is vital to implement the fiber into your diet with an accredited practicing dietitian to make sure you're not starving yourself of essential nutrients and also fiber that will keep your gut healthy in the long term. So here we've got a comprehensive list of different fibers with low and high FODMAPs. As you may notice, many appear to be low FODMAP. However, it should be noted that they may still cause bloating in some people as they are really readily fermented in the gut. So some examples of these fibers for resistant starch, they include cooked and cooled potatoes and pasta and green banana flour. Fructans, we've got onion, garlic, the usual, 
guar gum is a thickening agent and a prebiotic. Um, in this case, we also sometimes have partially hydrolyzed guar gum, which is more effective in alleviating your IBS symptoms. And I will be speaking about this later. We've got wheat dextrin, which is commercially added as a prebiotic. Beta glucans are in oats. Pectins are citrus fruits, thickening agents. Psyllium is in psyllium husks. Cellulose is in the peels of your fruits and vegetables. And then you've also got goss, which is chickpeas and lentils and other beans. So there is a very close relationship between your fiber intake and the nature of your stools. Your poop is truly a window into your health. And so it's very important to keep track to see how your fiber intake is traveling. Lumps or hard pellets may be a sign that you're constipated, which is a lack of hydration and dietary fiber. Whereas liquid mush is more of a sign of diarrhea, which shows a low soluble fiber intake and imbalanced gut microbiome and or a gastrointestinal disorder. So some red flags to look out for include blood or mucus in your stools or urine, thin stools, change in bowel habits, and a feeling of incomplete emptying. So these may suggest some more severe conditions outside of IBS, which might include ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and even bowel cancer. So if you haven't had a formal diagnosis and you're seeing some of these red flags or you just need an extra bit of guidance, it's a good idea to get in contact with your gastroenterologist or your accredited practicing dietitian, and he or she can give you a correct diagnosis and also individual advice. So these are some tips for getting in your fiber when you're on a low FODMAP diet. And number one starts with increasing your fruit and vegetables. Extra fiber can be found in the peels of the fruits and veg. So don't forget to keep these on when you eat them. Choose a variety of different colors and make sure you're reducing your fruit juice consumption as these are really low in fiber and maybe replace them with some more high fiber like fruits. So some examples of low FODMAP fruits and vegetables include carrots, oranges, spinach, cucumbers, mandarin, and kiwi fruit. And kiwi fruit is also high in actinidin, and this can help with your regularity. So the Monash University Low FODMAP app is a great resource for anybody who wants to start on the diet or is not quite sure, and it'll determine FODMAP content for you by serving size. So second point is to increase whole grains. These are your oats, sourdough, quinoa, and ancient grains. Um, and they don't include barley, rice, belt, and wheat because these are high in FODMAP. So whole grains will reduce weight gain, type 2 diabetes risk, some cancers, and risk of heart disease. So you can also try a high-fiber breakfast cereal that doesn't include wheat, large quantities of dried fruits, or artificial sweeteners. You can view low FODMAP serving sizes for these on the Monash Low FODMAP app. So Alpine Breads, as seen in the top corner, are a FODMAP-friendly certified brand of bread products that also will promote fiber intake. The third point is to drink plenty of water. This will reduce constipation risk and eight cups or two liters a day on average is recommended. And finally, when we are low on fiber and unable to consume it as a part of your daily diet, the next logical step is supplementation. However, the problem is many commercial commercially available prebiotic fiber supplements contain inulin and wheat dextrin which are quickly fermented in the gut and this can cause bloating and gas so therefore a low FODMAP dietary fiber supplement is recommended um, and you can try something like regular gel or sun fiber but always contact your accredited practicing dietitian before choosing a supplement that's right for you. So sun fiber is a regulating prebiotic fiber that is the gold standard in the industry. It has the strongest evidence behind it for relieving bloating and helping to manage IBS constipation. It contains prebiotic fiber to increase both by phytobacteria and lactobacillus, promoting a healthy gut microbiota. It also has that partialized high partially hydrolyzed guar gum in it, which is completely water soluble and completely mixes with liquids. It produces short chain fatty acids at a much slower rate, which allows time for fermentation and reducing the bloating gas and discomfort. It will alleviate constipation by improving regularity of bowel movements and stool consistency, and it reduces glycemic index to help control blood glucose levels. An extra benefit is that it does make you feel fuller for longer because research has shown those who take sun fiber experience a decreased calorie intake at their next meal. And unlike other dietary fibers, essential minerals like calcium and magnesium are not inhibited in their absorption when consuming sun fiber. 
So an alternative to Sun Fiber is Regular Girl. The main difference with Regular Girl to Sun Fiber is that it has the added benefits of a probiotic as well as the prebiotic. So the probiotic is by Phytobacterium lactis and the probiotic will replenish good gut bacteria and nourish your gut. So Regular Girl is currently the only fiber supplement in the market to provide both the probiotic and the prebiotic in a single blend. And it's not clinically proven as a blend, but the sun fiber in it is scientifically proven for its prebiotic benefit. So Regular Girl therefore promotes the growth of helpful bacteria and decreases harmful bacteria to alleviate symptoms of constipation and diarrhea. If you're unsure which product is best, it's best to consult your accredited practicing dietitian to see which is best for you. Regular Girl will also promote the absorption of minerals like calcium and iron, and it also has that satiety effect to keep you fuller for longer. So these are some other dietary fiber supplements available on the market. K-Fiber is an example. It's made from sugar cane and refined to remove the sucrose whilst providing your prebiotic benefit. It supports gut health, maintains digestive regularity, and promotes a diverse microbiome. It has a tick of approval from Monash Low FODMAP and has 10 years of scientific research behind it to support its claims. Whilst it is unflavored, it's not recommended to mix it with liquids due to its grainy texture, but it is much better when consumed with foods. Unlike other fiber supplements, you also need a lot less to prove the desired effect. And then we have Wonder Foods PHGG, and unlike K-Fiber, Wonder Foods PHGG is derived from guar gum, and its prebiotic formula promotes good gut bacteria to ferment and produce short-chain fatty acids, which will alter the colon's pH so that you can't grow any more of those bad bacteria. The Wonder Foods PHGG claims to improve quality of life, increase stool frequency, soften stools, reduce flatulence, cramping and abdominal bloating, and normalize bowel movements in both diarrhea and constipation. So generic forms of PHGG are just as good, but it is still best to consult with your accredited practicing dietitian about which form of supplement is suitable for you. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any further questions about dietary fiber, following a low FODMAP diet, or about different supplements, feel free to get in contact with us at operations at fodshopper.com.au or leave your queries in the comments below. Thank you very much for listening.